So look at the count. One, two, three, four, five. He's up. Six, seven, eight. So he made it up to the count of 10. And it's 22 seconds before they re-engage. If a boxer, like an elite boxer, fought an MMA fighter, they would have almost no chance. A lot of people thought he won the decisions. I thought he won the decision. Very close fight. I mean, you can maybe say that Tyson Fury, you could kind of see an argument that he maybe could have won I don't think so, though. When it comes to damage, I looked at it, I've watched it three times, and in my mind, he won the fight. And I think that's one of the most extraordinary accomplishments in combat sports history. A guy who's had zero boxing matches, who is an MMA champion, goes and fights a guy who is one of the greatest boxers that's ever lived. I mean, Tyson Fury is phenomenal. Now, whether Tyson Fury took him seriously, whether he was overconfident, who right. knows? I mean, he literally said to him, time to go to school. I'm taking you to school at the beginning of the fight. And then Tyson uh, Fury said that? Yeah, and then when Francis dropped him in the third round, after the fight, Francis was like, you are a shitty professor. And Francis <laughs> is a real freak. He really rocked him. And by the way, check the, the amount of time that it took for him yeah, to I get up. Like 23 seconds. 23 seconds. So that's after he dropped him. Look how big Francis is. I mean, he's just an extraordinary specimen and didn't even start combat sports. He was 25 years old. Where is he from? Cameroon. So there's where he drops him. So now when he drops him, so look at the count. One, two, three, four, five. He's up. Six, seven, eight. So he made it up to the count of 10. And he's obviously clearly rocked, takes a big deep breath. But look, it's 12 seconds, 13, 14. The guy's still counting. Seven, eight. This is a bullshit count. The, the referee's still giving him an eight count. And it's 22 seconds before they re-engage. The way he hits him is just this clubbing left hook. It's not even like full power from Francis. I mean, he didn't really totally turn. Francis is dancing in front of him. <laughs> it comes out of nowhere, though. <laughs> yeah, and then battered him again in the eighth round, and somehow or another, they gave Tyson Fury the eighth round on at least one judge's scorecard, which is fucking insane. It might have been two judges. But boxing is a dirty business. It's a dirty sport. There's always one judge that's in the bag, it seems. At the very least, if they're not absolutely paid off at the very least they are deeply indebted to the promoters and there is some sort of an agenda to have this person who's either the most marketable or That's the one who the most is writing on i don't think he's going to have a rematch he didn't talk about a rematch didn't say he wanted a rematch and francis wants a rematch for sure francis thinks he won the fight and there's it's interesting after the fight immediately afterwards most people were saying that francis won after watching it carefully, some people have said that there could be an argument that Tyson Fury may have outpointed him. In my mind, Francis landed by far the harder shots, by far did more damage. Even though there's this thing that happens when you see an underdog outperform the expectations, which certainly happened. I think he was a 14 to 1 underdog. By the end of the fight, the online betting odds had Francis favored to win, which is crazy. Wow. And many people, including myself, felt like he did enough to win the decision. I felt he won by at least one round. And Eddie Hearn, he gave Francis two rounds. He said Francis beat him by two rounds. It's just an extraordinary accomplishment. Even losing a majority decision to Tyson Fury is insane. Because the only time this has ever happened before where an MMA champion fought a boxer was when Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather. But Conor McGregor fought Floyd Mayweather when Floyd Mayweather was at the tail end of his career. It was the last bout that Floyd had. And Floyd just kind of like wore him out, outboxed him, and stopped him in the fight. Whereas Francis fucking dropped him in the third round and battered him in the eighth round. And it was just an insane performance. L literally like a legendary combat sports performance. It'll go down in history. When they talk about boxing, it's one of the greatest accomplishments ever. Boxing is an amazing skill. It's an amazing thing to learn. It's it's very helpful in terms of self-defense. It's, it's an excellent... It's a must know it's a thing that you must know if you want to compete in combat sports you must know how to box but a really comprehensive skill set that a, a true MMA champion will have is far better. You know what's even better, Joe? To stop paying for pay-per-views altogether. It's absolutely absurd that ESPN charges $79 for each pay-per-view. That's bonkers! What's the solution then? Well, it's iWatchMax.com, where you can watch UFC and boxing pay-per-views, including any sport you might think of, for a fraction of the cost. Stream in full HD or 4K resolution. But here's the cherry on top. Your wifey would love this. You'll also get free access to all the latest movies and TV shows. It's like having Netflix, HBO, and sports all in one single place. So what's the catch? Well, you need to qualify to get into iWatch Max. Only a select few make the cut. If you wanted to be among the few we accept, 
you need to take a quiz on our website. The free access to movies will be limited to the first 1,000 orders only. So what are you waiting for? Scan this QR code or go to iwatchmax.com to check if you qualify. If a boxer, like an elite boxer, fought an MMA fighter, they would have almost no chance. If Tyson Fury fought Francis Ngannou in an MMA fight and beat Francis in an MMA fight, that would be more extraordinary than Francis beating Tyson Fury in a boxing match. Because at least a big part of Francis's skill set is his punching power and his hands. Whereas Tyson Fury has almost no experience in grappling, kicking, any of those skills. If he beat Francis in an MMA fight, that would be like the most incredible thing that anyone's ever done, ever. But no boxer, the only boxer that's ever even like at an elite level competed in MMA was James Tony fought Randy Couture. It was at the end of James Tony's career. He had already accomplished incredible feats as a pure boxer and kind of just took it for a paycheck. And he got taken down and just strangled pretty quickly. Randy Couture just ankle picked him, brought him to the ground, right. got on top of him, head and arm choked him. Once he got to the ground, it was like a foregone conclusion. Randy was going to destroy him. No boxer has ever said in the middle of their – like as if Manny Pacquiao in the middle of his prime said, I am going to fight MMA. That would be insane. And he would probably get his face kicked off, probably get strangled, probably get taken down, strangled, and he would be helpless. It's a different skill set. There's so much more to MMA. To me, it's more exciting to watch. It's certainly more complicated. It, it requires more of you. You have to train in multiple disciplines. You're not just training and using your hands, you're training in kicking, elbows, punches, knees, right. takedowns, submissions, yeah. submission defense. The, the rounds are longer. They're five minute rounds as opposed to three minute rounds. Five minutes is a long time. It's a time. long time. <laughs> it's a long time. And in the old days, in the pride days, in the old days of the UFC, there was no time limit. And then in the pride days, which was uh, one of the glory years of MMA in Japan, they would have a 10 minute first round. But that was very hard. Dan Henderson said that was what separated the men from the boys, that 10 minute round. Because 10 minutes of yeah. straight fighting is crazy. Against a train killer. And they would do this at like the Saitama Super Arena, which is like 90,000 people, the Tokyo Dome, these enormous venues. Not that boxing is not insanely difficult on your endurance as well, especially at a very elite level. It's next to wrestling, which is probably one of the most difficult things. It's about as hard a combat sport as exists, but MMA is the top. That's the top. The MMA champion is widely regarded by almost anyone who's an expert as being the baddest man on the planet. Whatever weight class it is, the MMA champion, for the most part, is going to dominate someone who is just a boxer. Right. For the most part. But, you know, you've got some guys like Mike Tyson. If someone taught Mike Tyson kicking <laughs> defense and how to take people down, good fucking luck. Good fucking luck when that guy's coming at you throwing punches. <laughs>